Uh, thanks very much, Steve. And it may, it may or may not be your favorite. So for some, uh, depending on on where you are, we we'll want to um, well follow up on several things and some of what what Marty's talked about with disease risk. But looking at the last week, um, a couple things. One, it uh, averaged out, and this isn't a surprise. Uh, a little cooler than normal statewide and actually region wide for much of the upper Midwest and Great Lakes. Uh, mean temperatures for the week about two to four degrees Fahrenheit below normal. And that's a something we're looking at, of course, the degree day units and accumulation, which are not, the seasonal totals are not very far off of where they typically are this time of the year, but we'll we'll talk more about that probably next week. The, the big news, of course, uh, for, for most people, many people anyway, on the right-hand side here, our weekly precipitation totals, this goes through yesterday morning, uh, we had uh, a, the most significant rainfall in the state for many, many weeks, months actually. And uh, you can see a swath here across much of central lower uh, Michigan, two four in, to four inches. Uh, there were some reports near five inches and some even beyond that as well. Uh, but uh, very, very, the yellow color here is, is at least two inches. And again, you can see some of the embedded. And the other issue about this was this was widespread rainfall that were almost everybody in that that area got some rain uh, less as you go north and south from that particular part of the state uh, you can see portions of well western upper Michigan and actually some portions of far southern lower that missed out at least they got rain but it was uh, it was significantly less than what fell in the central part of the state so big big change uh, turn of events it does not end uh, for many locations, certainly the long-term deficits that, that have developed, but it's it's made a huge difference. And uh, again, most areas, and I, I'm my I'm in that area, East Lansing's in an area, and we've just seen remarkable changes over the last week. Uh, lots of new weeds, uh, certainly that's a that's a big one, but uh, but crops look uh, very very different than they did just ten days ago. In terms of, of dryness and long-term deficits and, and drought, I uh, wanted to show uh, just one of the changes. Those are starting to be reflected in the indices that we watch here for uh, either a surplus or deficits of water. On the right-hand side was the U.S. drought monitor. It's, it still actually is the current value. We get another one coming here uh, in another hour or so. But uh, much of Michigan, over, uh, over 80% in abnormally dry conditions, over half in D1 moderate drought or worse, and, and about 7% of the state at that point in time, note the date the 11th, so it's a week ago last Monday, was in D2 or severe drought, which uh, again, we haven't seen very often here, but uh, it's part of a larger area in the Midwest in the Corn Belt that, that, that has been too dry. Now, that was before all the rain came uh, here again uh, last Wednesday and Thursday, and then again uh, over the weekend. And on the left-hand side here, I've got a graphic the vegetation drought response index is a combined uh, or combination of satellite-based data and surface data, and it, it reflects basically the the water status of a landscape. So it looks at well both crops and also natural vegetation. But what I wanted to uh, bring to your attention or to show here, this is following the rainfall that we had. And uh, browns and yellows here are areas that are stressed and just uh, there's not enough water for the plants and green is the, the opposite with surpluses. But for m large portions of southern, of certainly central and southern lower Michigan, uh, which were brown here uh, before this or preceding this, now we've uh, we've lost some of that. They, they, and I, I think what we, we can take home from this is that the at least this, the symptoms of stress that we had because of lack of water have shifted to the west and north, at least as geographically here. Still large areas of the Corn Belt you can see are under stress, but in, in Michigan uh, with this, uh, this particular index, you can see the, the most stress now in uh, northwestern lower where the precip totals for last week were much, much less. And that's certainly not a, not a coincidence, but it is a major change and uh, from, from where we've been. And as we now look at the here ahead, uh, more, I, I think more normal weather in general is, is forecast. So here's our weather map this morning. And we've actually got a pretty active forecast here, pretty active weather uh, discussion for the next 24 hours or so. Uh, area low pressure currently over northern parts of the state, over Lake Superior. And there's a frontal boundary, a cool front that drags south of that. And then a warm front 
just to our south. Now, the, a couple things to note with this: this is being driven by a, an upper-level disturbance, which is actually fairly fairly strong. Uh, and to the south of this warm front down here along the Indiana Ohio line, we've actually got some some really high humidity, some dew points up above seventy Fahrenheit. They're they're just moving now into the far northern parts of Indiana and Ohio. They will make it into southern lower Michigan here over the next several hours on southerly and southwesterly winds. And of course, at the same time, that cold front from uh, onto the west, that will move over the next 12 hours uh, basically across lower Michigan. And it's going to set the stage for, uh, well, a fairly fairly significant outbreak of showers and thunderstorms. We currently have on the lower left-hand side here, uh, there is activity already there. Uh, mostly in northern parts of the state, across eastern upper and the far northern part of lower Michigan here this morning. That's moving off to the east and south just a little bit. That's not the main event, though. Uh, that will that will take place here a little bit later this morning and especially this afternoon. Uh, and I would expect to see a line of thunderstorms break out here as that front goes through uh, and during the day. It looks like the, the greatest threat for precipitation with this will be early, well, early afternoon in western sections uh, and then shifting across the middle and latter part of the afternoon as you go east across uh, lower Michigan. Here's the map at 8 p.m. and you can see already uh, on the map, the front has cleared almost the southeastern corner of the state, still a little bit of precip there, uh, but a couple very important caveats or notes here. Uh, one is that the storms that uh, that we're expected to see develop here because of that high humidity, because of fairly strong instability, some of them could be strong, maybe some severe limit, uh, severe thunderstorms. Keep an eye on that, especially uh, in, in the lower left-hand side here. This is the Storm Prediction Center's convective outlook here for today. And you can see that they've put much of certainly the, the eastern half of lower Michigan in a slight risk. Uh, so uh, again, anticipating at least in some places, some of these storms might be strong. The primary threats would be high winds and possibly some hail. Uh, with that, if it does occur, the other thing I would note too about this uh, about this activity, and this is probably for many areas uh, one of the best chances of rain we'll see in the upcoming week. That it it uh, likely will not be uniform. There'll be some breaks. Most areas will see precip with this. Uh, and we're talking about amounts ranging from uh, half to three quarters of an inch in northern parts of the state, especially the northern lower, down to the northern lower, and then quarter to half inch totals to the south of that. There probably will be some areas that are that are largely missed or or uh, uh, give, uh, get much less or receive much less precipitation. So it will be a little bit spotty in terms of the amounts, nothing like what we saw last week. By tomorrow morning, High pressure moves back into the area. That's and that is Canadian high pressure, which this year is uh, has different meanings with uh, with smoke. But uh, we aren't anticipating any more of that at least not in the short term. Uh, stand by though. It's we we haven't seen the end of the the, the smoke from the wildfires. That's I think that's a fairly good bet. But tomorrow uh, and Saturday, and I'll move to the map here for Saturday. Look beautiful. Uh, cooler temperatures. And we'll see high temperatures today remaining uh, near 70 in the far north to the mid 80s in the far south, uh, especially where that warm front goes. Cooling off tomorrow, generally in the 70s tomorrow for high temperatures. Lows falling back into the 50s, so very, very pleasant. Mostly sunny skies, a few clouds lingering in the east, and the same case uh, during the day on Saturday. So it's two, two great days in both. Uh, Friday and Saturday. Next chance for precipitation after today will come probably on Sunday, beginning in the northern part of the state and then spreading uh, to the south and east late Sunday into Monday. And then because of the upper air pattern, that uh, that old uh, troughing feature that's been stuck there for the last couple of weeks, we'll see probably a couple more chances Monday and possibly Tuesday. But right now, not looking like a widespread type of a rain, but just a continuing chance or threat, maybe 30 or 40 percent for the early part of next week. Precipitation totals here for the whole week, as I mentioned, most of this you see here on the map, uh, the vast majority of it is what's expected to fall over the next 24 hours with uh, the that weather system we talked about. From uh, quarter to half inch totals in southern lower to uh, half to three quarters uh, in northern lower, and then less as you go north and west from there into the UP. So uh, not too far off of what climatology says for this year, maybe a little bit less than normal. 
uh, potential of apple transpiration rates, a reference here, a uh, little bit of a, of a difference, uh, a little bit below normal for the upcoming week in far northern parts of the state and a little bit above normal in the south. So we'll see that that translates from uh, about 15 hundredths of an inch in the far north to uh, two tenths or a little bit better than that across the south. So not, not very, very different, but uh, again, a little bit of a difference relative to normal in the state. So then where are we headed? There's a, there's a couple of messages here in the medium range guidance, which has been consistent. And that's a good thing if you, as you're, you're forecasting, uh, looking at the, uh, again, the last couple of days. But I think the big message is the, the most uh, striking message is, is that the big ridge that's led to all of the heat and the problems with high temperatures, et cetera, across much of the Southwest, that's gonna continue. Uh, and you can see that on the lower left here. Uh, it does move though, it edges a little bit further to the east and to the north towards us. As a result of that, the message is we're gonna warm up and we're gonna see that warm up begin as early as the middle and latter part of next week and probably continue longer than that through the end of July and maybe into early August. And again, you can see in the this uh, temperature forecast that large areas of almost all the continental uh, lower 48 states here are expected to be warmer than normal. And then uh, precipitation totals normal to above normal because we're still close enough to the jet stream. We're going to see, just like we will early next week, we're going to see a, a number of weather systems. They may not all have a lot of water with them, but they still will have a chance for precipitation. So both 6 to 10 day and 8 to 14 day outlooks are very similar. And I think especially with the temperatures, that's a really good bet. So look for, look for our temperatures to pick up, go back up to above normal levels by later next week and probably beyond that. And I'll wrap uh, up at least the weather part here. Uh, again, most of the action we'll be looking at weather-wise will be over the next 24 hours and then no rain again possible until late in the weekend or early next week, uh, but then a gradual warming trend after that as you just saw. So finishing there, I'll introduce next week's speaker for virtual breakfast. That'll be on the 27th. And it's Dr. Chris Stefanzo who will be with us. All, all of you know uh, Chris, and uh, she'll be with us here next Thursday to talk about uh, give an insect update for Michigan. And with that, I'll turn back to Steve.